Hello, my name is Tomasz Pożytek and in this video I would like to talk about the user context and authentication in Power Virtual Agents for Microsoft Teams. By default, when you install a new, when you provision a new Power Virtual Agents for Teams and then you go into topics and you create a new one, then here in this designer canvas, you'll notice that you have already those two built-in variables, global variables basically the user display name and the user ID. Each of them gives you information about the currently the current user who is conversating with the bot. So let us display them. Let me show you what it is. I need to as well define some bigger phrases. So now let me show you what it is. Right, so these two variables actually host or contain the information, the context of the currently logged in user. And this is this SSO approach because bot is not asking user to authenticate, it is just taking its context from the Microsoft Teams. Now what is important this is just the Azure ID identifier of the user. This is not the um, bearer token, so we can actually use it to call Graph API, for example, in the context of this user. But what can we use it for? Well, for example, we can create a Power Automate. That will grab and display users' data. So I need to pass this user ID as an input variable. And with that, I can, for example, call Office 365 stack of actions, uh, sorry, users. And to, for example, get user's profile. So here, the only input variable that is required is actually this user ID that I own already. All right, so I just need to pass it here. And then I can return, for example, user's email here to go all right all right so now I can call this action so I need to provide the bot user ID and in return I can display a message this user's email that has been returned all right let me just save it and check if it works Okay, so I'm going to test topic. And right now that I not only have my information that is taken from uh, the user's context, but as well, the bot was able to obtain my user's email address. So this is the basic authentication, I mean, the basic SSO, the basic user context that we can have in Microsoft Power Virtual Agents for Microsoft Teams. Now, how can we change it? What other options do we have? Once you're in the chatbot that you'd like to, you know, change the authentication methods, you need to hit this, uh, the icon to go into security. And under security, there are, there is an authentication tile. Under authentication tile, you can actually change how this authentication works for this specific bot. So you can choose between no authentication so that any user within your tenant is going to be able to converse with that with that um, uh, bot, but there is not going to be any context of the user. So this is going to be a totally anonymous conversation. Or we can use this approach only for teams. And therefore, as you saw, there are going to be those two variables. So the bot display username and the bot user ID. Or we can go to manual for any teams. And now once we use this manual um, authentication method, then we can as well choose what provider we'd like to use. So either this is Azure Active Directory or for example, generic OAuth 2. And then if you use generic OAuth, you can even use uh, Google Authenticator or any other authentication provider that simply uh, is following the OAuth 2.0 method. 
let me stay with the Azure Active Directory v2 method. Now, what have we do to actually configure it? The very important information you can find here under the Learn More. So once you navigate there, and then to configure end user authentication, there you can find all the important um, information on how you should actually configure this authentication, this mobile authentication, to be working with your virtual bot. Right, so the first thing we need to just register an application. So I have to go into Azure portal, then under the Azure Active Directory to app registrations and here to create a new application. Now this redirect URI has to be set, as you can find here, to that URL. Let me just use it. All right and then I need to register it. So this is the first step. Now we have the application client ID that I need to copy and paste here. The next thing is a client secret. For this, you need to go on the certificates and secrets and simply issue a new secret. And then again, copy it and paste it. Now for the token exchange URL, there's again information here in this documentation. So just scroll down. There is this huge table with all the information we need. So um, 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 what it is here. Now that's the example for the Azure ID. So again, we need to paste it. Then the tenant ID. That's also the information we can find in the overview of our registered application. Copy and paste. And now the most important thing are the scopes. So here we need to add the scopes that we want this bearer token to contain once a user authenticates. So depending on what actions we would like to actually then do, what, would we, what endpoints we would like to call, then we need to put here the scopes that we want to put in that bearer token. So the next thing we need to do is to go to API permissions and grant the user specific permissions. The first one, the very important one, under the delegated permissions, of course, is the open ID. So that's the one, sorry, that's the one that actually is going to allow the bot to sign in the user. So I'll just add it. And now other uh, permissions that we actually want to grant, as said, depends on the scenarios that we would like to then Execute. So, for example, for this purpose, I would like the bot to be able to call Graph API in the context of this user to, for example, list the groups that this specific user belongs to. So, for that, I need these specific permissions, right? So, I need to add these scopes to the user. So, I need to go again to add permissions and Graph API delegated. And under directory, I actually need to select all these. And in the end, I need to grant the admin consent. All right, that's done. So the next thing I have to do is actually to get these scopes and paste them here, but this time they should not be comma delimited, but just space delimited. So this way, once a user is authenticated, that bearer token will contain those scopes, so it will allow it to be used to call Graph API for these specific scopes, for this specific information, for example. Let me just save this configuration. So I can close it. Now I'm just navigate back to that specific topic. And this time, I have as well this information that is logged in, so another variable, and authentication token. So the two new global variables that I can use to get user's context. The is logged in is simply uh, the Boolean variable that returns true or false if the user is logged in or not. So I can, for example, use it to create a condition uh, based on this is logged in is equal to true. And then if the user is logged in, what I can do, I can again show the message to show my uh, authentication token, which is a bearer token. Let me just save it now. 
And the next thing I will do, I'll create a new Power Automate that is actually going to call graph API that endpoint to get the number or the names of the groups that I'm a user, that I'm a member. All right. So here I need to provide now the token. And now I need to call the HTTP action because, well, calling Graph API is still considered as premium. So I need to now take all these. Oh, so we'll get. I'll also pass user ID. So I'll have the user ID. And then I need to use the authentication to be sorry, a basic but row. That is error token. Okay, and in response, I can now just return So I'll just add this uh, as a response. So joined uh, names of groups as the response. So right now I can call this action. So I need to provide the auth token and user ID. And in response, I'll just display the response. Now, not one thing. Once I save it and actually trigger this conversation again, this time, because the bot is not actually getting my context from Microsoft Teams, I will be prompted to authenticate. So see it in action. Into login. And now once I paste this uh, code here, it will actually um, let the bot to exchange it for my bearer token. So let me show you. So right now, yes, so this is my bearer token, right? So it has been displayed, all the information this is my bearer token. And well, this is the list of all the groups that this specific user belongs to. So this is how it actually worked, right? And Therefore, once again, we have those two authentication methods. We have two ways to actually grab users' context. The first one is very simple. So it actually lets us to work within this Power Virtual Agent conversation. We can exchange it using the Office 5 action, for example, for other users' information for the user's data. However, for any scenarios that you would like to call Graph API to execute actions on behalf of the current user, not only maybe to get this members uh, list list of members, but for example to call actions from the ta from the teams and uh, create channels, create private channels, create topics, answer the topics. I mean, to have this um, Power Automate actually triggering a lot of activities on behalf of the user, then the only way to do is to do it is actually to configure this authentication to be using Azure AD uh, version 2 and then to use this bird token 
with specific scopes, of course, for the endpoints that you would like to call to actually uh, complete those scenarios. And well, thank you very much for watching. This is all I had. I hope you now understand how to configure the Azure AD authentication in Power Vital Agents and how to use it and what benefits it gives you. If you have any comments, leave them down in the comment section under the video and well, thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and bye.